rock bottom. It's an episode that's always stuck with me for more reasons than one. Coming in the show's first season, the episode was produced in the small sliver of Spongebob's history, where it was free from the expectations of being the biggest cartoon on the planet, and you can feel that everywhere you look in this episode, from the experimental animation to the color choices that feel like the antithesis to the show's colorful standard. But most of all, this episode explores an idea that's never quite done the same anywhere else in the franchise. What happens when you take Spongebob, the show's ever so cheery protagonist, and showcase him at his lowest point? And that's what we're going to be looking at in this video as we plunge into the deepest part of the sea and dive into rock bottom. Patrick, I think we're on the rock <laughs> As I mentioned before, I think this episode is a not so subtle representation of somebody at their lowest point, and in order to illustrate that change in Spongebob's circumstances, the episode starts off by showing him his happiest, fresh from a visit to Glove World. I've heard theories about this episode representing the afterlife, and while you can draw really neat connections between Spongebob not paying the bus driver and having to wander around rock bottom, and the Greek mythology of the dead who don't pay to cross the river Styx having to wander around the shores, I I don't know enough about Greek mythology to say anything else, so I'll let somebody smarter than me explain that in the comments while I continue to discuss how this episode is more of a metaphor as Spongebob and Patrick make their way to rock bottom. The descent down is not a gradual process, as it's a 90 degree drop. Getting to rock bottom is less of an hourglass and is more of a light switch, as the pair find themselves in a world that they can't understand. This idea of everything being confusing when you're at rock bottom is continued in a bathroom gag that perhaps has a different different connotation 23 years later, but it's fairly clear that the purpose of it is to show how Spongebob and Patrick's world has been turned upside down and that neither of them know how to deal with the changes. Patrick continues to freak out as Spongebob learns yet another lesson from the reality that's forming around him. When you're at rock bottom, nothing is fair, as despite getting there on the same bus at the exact same time, Patrick ends up catching a ride back up while Spongebob watches hopelessly from the ground. Soon after, while waiting for another bus to come, the balloon that Spongebob brought from Glove World is carried away in a gust of wind, and as Spongebob comes back to the bus stop, he finds that everything and everyone that came with him to rock bottom is gone, and that he's truly alone. This doesn't last long though, as Spongebob is approached by a glowfish who seems unable to understand him, as he ignores his pleas for information regarding the bus schedule, and instead just elects to chase after the balloon, leaving Spongebob once again entirely by himself. The next few minutes of the episode serve as the comedic core of the 11 minutes, as our protagonist continually misses every bus that comes by, finding that while he's always close, he can never quite find a way out of rock bottom. Every time that he almost gets it, the bus seems to leave without him, and he's no closer than he started. The frustration in Spongebob continues to build up, as the work that he puts in ends up being ultimately meaningless, as even after he put in the time to try to get some candy out of the vending machine, somebody comes at an opportune time and takes it, leaving his labor fruitless. All of this build up gets the normally easygoing Sponge as heated as we've ever seen him in the series, as he stops playing cat and mouse with the bus and makes his way to the bus station, where he encounters quite a long line leading up to the counter, and and as he makes his way down, he continues to get more and more dejected by the number of people who have seemingly been in rock bottom for longer than him and are getting their information before him. Even once he gets to the back of the line, he's still getting pushed further back, as some people seem to be born literally ahead of him, which causes his rage to bubble up in a way that we haven't seen yet in this episode. When he does eventually find his way to the counter, the attendant seems unable to understand him, as when you're at rock bottom, trying to talk to people will just just result in them acting like you're speaking a completely different language. When they do find a way to communicate, he just tells Spongebob that he's once again just missed the bus out of rock bottom and is gonna have to wait until morning. Despite pleas from our desperate protagonist, the lights kick off, the attendant leaves, and Spongebob finds himself in a world that makes the rock bottom of old pale in comparison. This isn't your average everyday darkness. This is advanced darkness. 
This newfound lack of light causes him to spiral out of control as he runs through the town with his sentences slowly losing any sense of structure. Even when Spongebob thought that he was at his lowest point, he finds himself in a completely new rock bottom where none of the structures seem recognizable and the citizens that he once found annoying are nowhere to be seen. Except that when he reaches the edge with his back against the wall, the glowfish who chased after his balloon appears by his side with the aforementioned inflatable in hand. Despite his appearance, Spongebob just switches from fear to anger as his interactions with every other stranger in this place have been so sour that he's given up on expecting anything else. But when he opens his eyes again, he finds himself ascending from rock bottom, but steadily, not nearly as quickly as he fell into it. He looks around and realizes that all of this is because of the kind action of one stranger, and when Spongebob begins to thank him, thinking that he can't really understand his language, the glowfish responds, You're welcome! affirming that he really did understand Spongebob the entire time, even when Spongebob felt like he was entirely alone. As the balloon carries him up out of rock bottom, it doesn't stop when it reaches the ledge as it continues to go up, finding himself even higher than he did before his descent. His trip to rock bottom allows him to ultimately reach new heights that he didn't even know were possible, as all the way up in the air, he gains more perspective on Bikini Bottom, the world around him, than he ever could before, eventually making his way back home safely. When there, he uses this newfound perspective in order to be able to see Patrick making his way back to rock bottom for Spongebob, proving that his friends were always there for him and were trying to help him, even if he couldn't see it when he was at rock bottom, where his vision was clouded and his sense of loneliness amplified. Rock Bottom exemplifies many attributes of early Spongebob Squarepants, with the most clear perhaps being just how truly clever of an episode it is. The basic idea for it is incredibly cliche. The main character gets stuck in a foreign place where they don't speak the language, shenanigans ensue, they get home in an unexpected way, the episode ends. But instead of just creating some other Bikini Bottom where they happen to speak French or something, the show chooses to utilize this nautical setting, which is something that's been perhaps taken for granted for how simply cool it is by the modern Spongebob viewer 24 years later, and creates an iconic location based on the deep sea and the creatures that inhabit it. The show could have also stopped there in the creation of Rock Bottom, but they instead choose to also utilize the fact that it's an animated show, using colors and framing in a really interesting way throughout the episode, so that even when Spongebob enters a building, it's clear that he's still in a darker, unfamiliar place. And once again, they could have stopped there and still created a great episode, but they instead choose to capitalize on this deep sea setting and on this new aesthetic that they've created for the show in order to weave together this story of Spongebob reaching his rock bottom in rock bottom and how that feeling affects his psyche and the perspective of the world around him and how all it took was a single kind act of a single kind stranger in order to turn it all around, help him exit rock bottom, and help him gain a new perspective of the world around him. With this new perspective, the viewer can begin to reevaluate the actions of all of the deep sea inhabitants that Spongebob Brandon does as rude during his time at rock bottom, in which you'll find that they all just acted like how you would expect normal people to act. Was the guy stealing Spongebob's candy, or did he just happen to find some food at the bottom of a vending machine that appeared to be abandoned and thought it was his lucky day? Sure, the attendant was perhaps a tad unhelpful to Spongebob, but he did try to understand him at the end of his workday and ultimately gave him the information he was seeking. While Spongebob was in the mindset that the world was out to get him, it seemed like the world was out to get him and that nobody understood him, but in reality, they were acting the same as people from Bikini Bottom, with everybody just going about their day. Except, not everybody actually does this, as the glowfish that Spongebob initially waved off ends up being the only one to come back and try to help him, emphasizing that how in a literal sea of fish who don't really care about him, it only took one to help Spongebob get out of the physical and his emotional rock bottom. While the location of rock bottom has been revisited many times outside of this episode, from from roller coasters to video games to episodes in the series so many seasons later that the show was almost unrecognizable, I have found that while exploring the city in a way that was impossible with the cell-based animation of this 11 minute episode is somewhat neat, no other piece of media has ever been able to truly capture the magic of Rock Bottom that is present in this episode. And as while Rock Bottom as a place is cool in its simplicity and its aesthetic, as the deep sea creatures and the iconic two building design make the landscape truly unforgettable, what really makes it so impactful is the initial story of Spongebob's first visit there, as after you already know what Rock Bottom is 
and I've already gotten out of it, going back doesn't elicit that same feeling of unfamiliarity as Spongebob's and the viewer's trips back always have a sense of safety that this episode never allows Spongebob to feel. As while Spongebob may visit the location again in other episodes, and likely will in future episodes down the line, he will never truly be in rock bottom ever again. Anyway, that's about it for me. Thanks for indulging me in this pretentious little trip down memory lane, as Rock Bottom is an episode that stuck with me ever since watching it as a little kid, so I'm glad to finally have a video out about it. If you want to tell me that I just wasted 10 minutes of your life giving you a pseudo-intellectual lecture about an episode of a kid's show, my Twitter's in the description. But either way, this has been Ample Samuel, and I'll see you in about a week with another video that feels like watching a cartoon with a librarian. Thanks for watching. Thank you.